Hello, thank you for watching. My name is Thomas Mergel, and it's been a while since I've done a video for my album collection because of the whole move I did. I got everything together, got my CDs up, and last time I think I ended off at Candlemas. So uh, I'm going to continue on with the C's, and I actually just bought this, and it actually belongs in the A's, but Abbott's new album. Uh, very good album. Black metal, but it's like black and roll and everything. Uh, it's like sort of immortal, but uh, it's, it's very catchy. It's good stuff, so yeah. Abbott's album, definitely check that one out. It's on Season of Mist Records. Now this, I'm gonna be going really fast because right here I have like uh, Cattle Decapitation and Cannibal Corpses like full discography. So I'm gonna try to fly through these and just give a slight opinion on each. Eaten Back to Life, classic album. Very, very classic. You love it, I love it, she loves it, they love it, Jesus loves it. Um, very good songs on here. Edible Autopsy, uh, Skull Full of Maggots, uh, the Undead Will Feast, Born in a Casket. I mean, some very good staples in the Cannibal Corpse uh, live concert uh, set list. There you go. Next up is one of the most controversial and, like, fucked up album covers ever is Butchered at Birth. Meat hook sodomy gutted. Living dissection under the rotting flesh covered with sores. Vomit the soul. Butchered at birth. Rancy deputation and innards decay. I love this song. Vomit the soul. It is one of those songs where I think it's one of their best. And I don't think they really play it often. And it's fucking awesome. And uh, Glenn Benton from Deicide's guest vocalist on that fucking uh, track. A Tomb of the Mutilated. This album is one of those where the first two songs are some of the heaviest songs ever put together on a death metal album. I think uh, Niall's Annihilation of the Wicked is very close in terms of, uh, here's an intro, like here's our first two songs, they are incredibly heavy. Because, uh, yeah, Annihilation of the Wicked's heavy, but this one you have Hammer Smashed Face and then I Come Blood. The riffs on those two songs alone, I mean, there's more riffs on those two songs than what most bands are doing these days, um, particularly in the deathcore genre. Now, I have this little gem here. I found it, and it is the uh, Hammer Smash Face little EP here. It's a demo. Uh, it says previously unreleased material, but this was like 23 years ago. It has uh, Hammer Smashed Face and then The Exorcist. And Zero the Hero, this is Chris Barnes era, Cannibal Corpse still. Obviously, because next up we have The Bleeding. Um, very, very good album. This is one of those where, uh, well, it has a lot of their set list live staples on here. Fucked with a Knife, Stripped, Raped, and Strangled, Pulverized, Return to Flesh. Uh, very good songs in here. What was that one? Force Fed blo Broken Glass. I always thought that was an interesting song title. Very good song, too. Then we have uh, the end of the Chris Barnes era and on with the Corpse Grinder era. And I don't care which one you like. They're both good, so get over it. Corpse Grinder's been in the band for 20 years now. Or has it been longer? No, it's been 20 years. Um, Because I think Vile came out in 96. Was it 96? Yes. 96, Metal Blade Records. Vile, Devoured by Vermin. Awesome. Mummified and barbed wire, awesome. Perverse suffering, love it. Just figured, got to see that song, I think played twice. I've seen Cannibal Corpse probably six times now. Just figured is a fucking awesome song and seeing them play that live is magnificent. Um, Bloodlands, Puncture Wound Massacre, Relentless Beating, Absolute Hatred, yeah. Uh, Eaten from its inside, Orgasm Through Torture and Monolith. Then we have uh, one of their most experimental albums in terms of songwriting, but uh, I really think it works well here, Galleries of Suicide. I Will Kill You, Disposal of the Body. I mean, experimental in terms of tone and overall execution with the atmosphere. There's a very grim, grim undertone on this album. Sentence to Burn, which I don't, I actually don't like that song. It's, it's a boring song. Uh, Blood Drenched Execution, I love that song. Uh, Gallery of Suicide, Dismembered and Molested from Skin to Liquid, which from Skin to Liquid is a fucking awesome instrumental track. And, uh, yeah, very good stuff. Of course, there's more songs in there. I only named like six or seven. Then we go with one of their best albums. I love this one, Bloodthirst, Pounded into Dust, Dead Human Collection, Unleashing the Bloodthirsty, The Spine Splinter, Ecstasy and Decay, Raped by the Beast, Coffin Feeder, Hacksaw Decapitation, 
Blowtorch Slaughter. <laughs> Blowtorch Slaughter. There you go. Sickening Metamorphosis and Condemned to Agony. Let me have Gore Obsessed. I have the sleeve here because, oh my god, it's so gruesome. Gore Obsessed is probably my favorite album. I love uh, The Wretched Spawn. I love all these albums. Uh, Cannibal Corpse is one of my favorite bands. Probably my favorite uh, gore kind of death metal band. But um, yeah, Savage Butchery, Hatchet to the Head, Pit of Zombies, Dormant bo Bodies Bursting, Compelled to Lacerate, Drowning in Viscera, Hung and Bled, Sanded Faceless, Mutation of the Cadaver, When Death Replaces Life, and Grotesque. Love this band. Oh, I'm so it's so awesome just kind of looking at my CDs. Um, then we have, I have this, this two CD sleeve here. I just pulled the CDs out. Um, if, you're, if you're squeamish, look away because Wretched Spawn. This album is sick. This album is actually the first album I heard about them. Um, listen to them. I listened to their live album in 2004 and I was like, whoa, who are these guys? I got to hear more. And it's just one of those things where you listen to a band and they've been out for 10, 15 years and they have a shit ton of music out already. So then they can just indulge. You can just, uh, this is the first album. My friend bought it actually, my friend Michael, and I loved it. One of my favorite songs on here that just blew me away was Frenic Disembowelment. I loved, uh, this one comes with the DVD and I loved seeing uh, Alex Webster and Pat O'Brien just shred that song to pieces. It's fucking awesome. Uh, the Wretched Spawn, Festering in the Crypts, one of their slowest songs, but it's also one of the heaviest songs that Jack Owen has ever written. It's fucking awesome. And then within this two CD uh, sleeve, I have Worm Infested. Very good little EP here. Uh, Systematic Elimination is a very good song, and that's found on this EP. Worm Infested, Demon's Night, The Undead Will Feast, which is a remake off of uh, an old... something from Eaten Back to the Life, I believe. Confessions and cover of Metallica's No Remorse, and on the back you see a huge vagina with spiked teeth. It is disgusting. And it is awesome, because that is what Cannibal Corpse is. And there's no way around it. They are up front with who they are and what they are. And then we have Kill. Uh, you really can't see that because it's a very, very dark red and black. But it's simply just Kill. There's the blades on the disc. Uh, this is the first... This is the CD I listened to the most when I played World of Warcraft probably in 2006. Um, because I did a lot of PvP back then. And this album was perfect. The album was... Kill. I played the horde. In the linear notes here, uh, Corpse Grinder says for the horde. So I was just like, oh my god, this is fucking awesome. And so songs like The Time to Kill Is Now, Make Them Suffer, Murder Warship, Five Nails Through the Neck, Barbaric Bludgeonings. I mean, this was prime music for hopping in a PvP arena or hopping in the battlegrounds and just shredding the alliance with my orc warrior and my undead warlock. Good times, good memories with the, that album and that game. We have Torture had the sleeve on it. And then, of course, there's the barbaric uh, butcherings found within. This CD is probably my least favorite out of the whole bunch. Um, and that's not to say it sucks. It's just... Uh, and then, actually, this, album's, <laughs> this album is actually incredibly good. But I think out of all of these, this is probably my least favorite, with Vile being close with it. But the songs are still good. Demented Aggression, Sarcophag Sar Sar Sarcophagic Frenzy, Scourge of Iron, which pl is played on every single concert now, uh, Encased in Concrete, very awesome song, As Deep as the Knife Will Go, I fucking love that song. Um, what was the other one? Followed Home Then Killed, that is an eerie-ass song. That is a very fucking metal song. The Strangulation Chair, and uh, Caged and Contorted. Like I said, it's a very good album, but it's probably my least favorite. And then finally, their latest one, another very, very dark album um, album cover, A Skeletal Domain. I don't even know if you can really see that, but very, very dark. Uh, high Velocity Impact Spatter, Sadistic Embodiment, Killer Become, A Skeletal Domain, and so on and so forth. Um, their latest album. I love it. Very good stuff. Now moving on to Cattle Decapitation. We have Homovore. 
The limited edition 15th anniversary 10. Uh, yeah. Limited edition 3 out of 100. I bought this straight from Travis Ryan himself. Uh, just He had a sale up on Facebook and was like, hey, just it was I can't remember how much it cost but he was uh, just PayPal me this amount leave a note of what it is with your address and I'll send it to you so um, it's incredibly hard to find this and considering it was brand new straight from Travis Ryan I had to get it it's this is Cattle Decapitation I mean I just talked about Cannibal Corpse being one of my favorite bands Cattle Decapitation is right up there with them I love that band and the fact that I could support Cattle Decapitation straight from the singer Travis Ryan um, fuck yeah, I was going to do it. Next up, I have To Serve Man. I know I'm forgetting um, another disc right after Home of War, but I don't have that. So To Serve Man. This is my least favorite album by them. Uh, not to say that it's too bad, but the production is weak. The songwriting is meh. And uh, they have much, much better in their discography. Next up is Humanure. This is a step up from To Serve Man, but it is still one of those where you have to be in the mood to want to listen to this album. Uh, but songs like Humanure, uh, Reduced to Paste, Bukaki Tsunami, Chumified, and I love the song Polyps. If I, if I could see them play the song Polyps live, I could be just, I could die happy because that's one of my favorite songs by them. I don't know why. I think it's just a fucked up song. And it's just incredibly realistic, you know, in terms of just how people are and how people eat. Uh, Karma, Bloody Karma is next. And I bought this on a whim when I bought uh, this and Pig Destroyer. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give some some different grindcore a chance. I'm going to expand my horizons. I did this in like 2007 or 2008. And uh, this was one of them. I bought this in, Pig, in a Pig Destroyer album. And I just, I liked what I saw. I liked the logo. I liked the album art. Karma, Bloody Karma. I looked at the back. I, it has the Ouroboros that they are famous for. And um, I love this album. Unintelligent Design, Success is Hanging by the Neck, 1,000 Times Decapitation, uh, Total Gore. I, I fucking, I love this album. And this was the, the, what popped my cherry for this band. And then next, I have the very next album, moving those over. I have Cattle Decapitation's The Harvest Floor. This is where the band started getting insane. Uh, Karma Bloody Karma was good, had a great atmosphere, but The Harvest Floor is where you see Travis Ryan start to go maniacal with his vocals. This is where you get to see uh, Josh Elmore really tear into his guitar, and this is where... uh, they got their drummer uh, David McGraw. I think it was right after this is released. I don't think he's. A, I don't think he actually wrote on this album. I could be wrong, but this came out in 2009, and I know David McGraw was joined the band soon afterwards. And this is where the band really started to explode musically, and um, you really see a lot of the craziness evolve into what is hailed as one of their best albums, Monolith of Inhumanity. This album is so good, I bought it twice. <laughs> Um, I only have one now because I traded one off for an Enslaved album. But, yeah. If you... I'm holding this album. You know exactly what this is. I don't need to read any of the songs off the back. Um, One of their best albums. And this is more or less where they just even went more insane. Songwriting is just berserk. The speed is intense. And uh, Travis Ryan's vocals really go off the deep end in terms of extreme awesomeness but then you get the Anthropocene extinction and they kind of feed into what they just did on Monolith except for this has more of a mature songwriting uh, mentality about it I believe I don't think it's as good or as fast but if you one of the things I did in my review last year was listen to this by itself you listen to this by itself it is fucking balls deep into awesome death metal and grindcore death grind. Um, If you compare it to this, it may seem like the weaker choice. On its own, it is a masterpiece. So still an incredible album. And all of us Cattle Cattle Decapitation fans know that um, they can only go... I don't know how they could top those two albums. Those two albums are just musically divine and utterly insane. 
Then we have Carnal Blasphemy, Liars, Made, Authority. This is some good stuff on Gore House Productions, good death metal. I got this, I think, this year? No, last year for review. And this one reviewed very well. Oh, case is broke. <laughs> That's the bad thing about getting jewel cases in the mail. Uh, 95% of the time they break before you get to pull them out of the envelope. Um, check out Gorehouse Productions. I love that label. And check out this band, Carnal Blasphemy. Very good death metal. Now we have... We dive into... Uh, how should I say this? We dive into what I used to really, really like. And keep in mind, I was only a child at the moment. I think I was 19. So still young. And I liked the band Chimera. Now, I have Pass Out of Existence, which is kind of like... Heavy metal meets new metal meets alternative metal, but it still was like crunchy, good, heavy metal. Uh, this was their first full length, I believe. And I got this after I bought the album I'll talk about next. But uh, I did like this for a while, but I honestly haven't played it in years. And I think the last time I listened to it, I wasn't really in feeling it anymore. So it's very, very dated. But this album still holds up The Impossibility of Reason by Chimera. Chimera. Um, this album was one of those where I... How did I hear it? I think I heard it at a buddy's house. And I think they played either Power Trip or Pure Hatred. And uh, at the time, you know, Lamb of God was just blowing up. Kill Switch Engage was just getting big. And then all of a sudden, Chimera releases this. And this was heavier than all that shit. Oh, oh, and Devil Driver was fucking getting big. And so between this and Devil Driver, I was back and forth with those bands a lot. Just listen, I, I listened to this, and then I listened to Devil Driver, and then I listened to, you know, something else, Fear Factory, you know, they just came out with a new album recently, or recently after this came out. And this album is their Master of Puppets. This album is their Injustice for All. This album is their fucking... This is it's, it's their best album they ever released in their discography. And it was very, very early in their career uh, with songs like Cleansation, The Impossibility of Reason, Pictures in the Gold Room, Power Trip, Down Again, Pure Hatred, The Dehumanizing Process, Crawl, Stig Murder, Eyes of a Criminal, and so on. They were really ahead of the whole new wave of American heavy metal. And they did a really good job with songwriting. They were fierce... Uh, they had great production. They really knew what, they really knew their shit, and it was really fun to listen to this. And then um, this will be the last album I talk about, and it is the final album I have of Chimera, because apparently I only borrowed my buddy's Chimera albums and didn't have anything new after this. This was the album that was directly after the Impossibility of Reason. It is a self-titled album. And this album is also really, really good. I'd say that Impossibility is still my favorite, but I, I think this would be second place. Uh, songs like Nothing Remains, Save Ourselves, Inside the Horror, uh, Comatose, Left for Dead, Everything You Love, Bloodlust, Pray for All. Um, very, very good stuff. They were, they were still growing. They, were just, they went through a lot of stuff going through the touring process of The Impossibility of Reason. They had some, some roster changes. And... Uh, this was one of those where how can I say this without um, how can I get my point across they didn't change a lot about their sound but there was a lot about them that sounded incredibly different But I mean you still had uh, the vocalist Mark Hunter who was uh, doing his thing and screaming into the mic and there was the band at the moment I think this came out in like 2006 and then every single Chimera disc is looks the same. It's just colored differently, even their DVD. So it was kind of cool. Um, but they had a really mature sound. They really find they really they they found themselves with this album. I think they had a unique sound about them. And um, honestly, if they could have stuck with this kind of direction for the rest of their career, I think they would still be together. But um, they had several CDs after this one. And even, I think they had two CDs after Rob Arnold and everybody left. But those ones are actually really, really bad. I, ne I never bought them. But, uh, yeah, that's it. I still have more albums to talk about in the C category. But that's it for Cannibal Corpse, Cattle Decapitation, Carnival Blast for Me, and Chimera. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. And I'll talk more about my CDs I have.
So uh, press the like button if you like that. Subscribe for more. I do a show for nice can- called Nice Cans. I'm going to be doing more things. And there's reviews as well. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.